Hello, I'm Dr. Gerald Chodak. In this video, I want to talk about what you need to do or consider if you have already undergone a radical prostatectomy, followed which you had radiation therapy and maybe hormone therapy because your PSA was rising, or because you had a high-risk cancer on your pathology report, and despite having those treatments, now you find that sometime later your PSA is beginning to rise. No doubt most men and their family members will be facing a lot of anxiety over that issue. Clearly, we don't want your PSA going up. But not all PSAs are necessarily life-threatening. The issues that are important are how soon after surgery the PSA begins to rise and how fast it's going up. What we don't have is a clear best approach at this time. We know that you can't get any more surgery and you certainly can't get any more radiation. And it is more likely that there are cancer cells somewhere else in your body, whether it's the bones or the lymph nodes or other organs is not clear. How would you find that out? Well, you could have a bone scan and many doctors will do that test. The problem is that if your PSA is under 10, nanograms per ml, the chances that your bone scan will show any cancer is extremely small. It may show something else like arthritis or an old injury, an old trauma event leading to other tests. And so the likelihood of benefiting from a, P, uh, a bone scan at a low PSA is probably very small. The same is true for a CAT scan. We do have a prostatin scan which can be used if you want to try and find out where it is. But in most cases, it probably doesn't matter where it is because the treatment is likely to be the same. Since you can't have surgery or radiation anymore, now you're into the area of hormone therapy, blocking the male sex hormone. And we have a growing number of ways of doing that with either surgery to remove the testicles or an LHRH agonist, or more recently, a new drug that was approved called Degarelix, which is an LHRH antagonist. Those form the basis for the initial hormonal approach. And the debate that goes on is when should you begin that? Should you begin that when your PSA is one or two or five? Should it be based on how fast it's rising? If it's doubling slowly, then maybe that doesn't pose the most immediate risk. Whereas if it is doubling very rapidly, those men are going to probably end up on hormone therapy at a much sooner time. Realize that there are no prospective randomized trials yet that tell us what to do and when to do it. So even if we decide we want to start hormone therapy, we don't know if we should do it at a very low PSA or in a fast rising PSA. My approach has been to say to patients, look, we don't know the answer, but we have different ways to approaching your case. If you're the kind of individual that wants to be aggressive, then you go on hormone therapy early. Maybe you consider intermittent hormone therapy as an option. We still don't have the results of the ongoing intermittent trials, but without knowing for sure what is best, all the options are on the table. That means early hormone therapy by itself with an injection. It means combined androgen blockade. That's another way to go. Or you can consider doing intermittent hormone therapy where you're on it and off it for a period of time. I think the best thing to say to you is that at the present time, you just have to decide how aggressive you want to be. The idea that intermittent hormone therapy has some reduction in side effects over time is one of the things that makes it appealing. But we don't know for sure how safe that is at the present time. So to summarize, what can you do if you have a rising PSA despite surgery and radiation? The answer is hormone therapy is going to be your best approach and you either take an aggressive approach and do it early on with your PSA rising, or you take a more conservative approach, wait until your PSA is much higher, maybe over 10 or maybe over 20, or if your PSA is going up very rapidly, those men are more likely to benefit from early hormone therapy than late hormone therapy. 
There are studies underway looking at what to do, and the question is whether chemotherapy plays a role in this setting. Without doing proper trials, we won't have the answer to that. This is no doubt an unsettling time for many men. Realize that not everyone is going to get into trouble. It depends on how fast it's going up. And if it's not going up very quickly, you may have more time to decide what to do. Hopefully this information will be useful to you. Thank you.